test. Brought to you by the new Bundy Singles Case. Grab one and enjoy the game. Bunnings Warehouse, where lowest prices are just the beginning. Amy, lucky you're with Amy. Holden, drive on. The Mail Intelligence Division. And the new 4 and 20 Traveller Pie. Easy to eat on the go. country and where we come from. We earned the right last year to be called the best team in the world. We earned that right in 2005, but now we have 2006 and we've got a fight on our hands. Now it's about restoring aura and it's like when you haven't got something, you then realise how important it is to have it back. We've got a very, very proud nation in regards to our rugby league and we want to be number one again. You used to watch it on television and sometimes you got to think back to those times and what it meant to you when you were 14, 15. And um, it was just the ultimate, you know, to represent your country. Yeah, to Johns and Johns will score. You know, the last 80 minutes you're going to see of Andrew Johns and an Australian jumper, probably something you will always be able to remember, being at the game, watching on TV. Probably one of the greatest players to have uh, played our game. I used to watch him as a kid and I used to love watching him play football, but to be uh, running out there tonight alongside him is going to be um, a major buzz for me. Johns is into the clear, has won the beat, gets them all away. It's Andrew Johns' uh, final test, you know, and he'll be looking to go out on a high, and unfortunately it's not in the same team as me, so be out to spoil the party. So we'll make sure uh, we go out and make things hard for him. Us Kiwis are good at spoiling parties. The great uh, Māori fighting spirit dates way back to our ancestors and, you know, the huck is a, a war cry of uh, a form of battle and, you know, our, our ancestors used to perform it in war. It pumps you up more than anything and, um, you know, it just gets you going, gets you, you, your blood pumping and, you know, um, just just hearing other boys give it, giving it their all, you know, that they're up for the occasion. My job is to make sure that I can do uh, everything we possibly can to get the boys ready to play. My job's done now, it's a matter of just getting onto the field and let's see if we can get a victory. This is the best. This is the best. We can't wait. It's, it's going to be one hell of a game. Aussie redemption or another Kiwi celebration? The Bundaberg Test. Australia versus New Zealand. On the home of big time sport, Channel 9. Good evening and welcome to Suncorp Stadium here in Brisbane. The crowd continue to make their way in for what promises to be a packed house tonight. Over 40,000 fans to witness what is one of the most eagerly anticipated clashes in the modern era. Earlier tonight, the Australian team bus made its way from the city down Roma Street and the police escort, in fact, on the wrong side of the road, what is always a very nervous time for the players, especially when you consider the enormous build-up there has been for this game. Along for the road ride tonight, our own Matthew Johns, who spoke to his brother Andrew, who tonight draws the curtain on what has been a glittering representative career that has spanned over a decade wearing the green and gold of Australia. Well, Joe, you first represented Australia in 1995, and I remember sitting next to you on the plane on the way over, and you were apprehensive, it was exciting. I mean, is it still as exciting now? Yeah, it is, mate. It's um, the opportunity to play with the best players, and, you know, not only I play the game, I'm a big fan of the game, so I love watching all these blokes play, but also the young blokes coming through, Carmichael, Jonathan, I love playing. I love watching them play, and I get an opportunity to play with them, so yeah, I'm very excited. What about on yourself? I mean, that's it's 11 years ago, and for the av average bloke sitting at home, after 11 years seeing you play so many big games, they just think this is easy for you. I mean, does it get any easier? Uh, mate, the, the preparation gets easier. The game doesn't. Um, you know, you're probably not as nervous as you used to be when you're younger. You, you, 
probably know what you, what's expected of you out there and, and what's coming. But um, mate, the, the game never gets easy. But as soon as you think you, you know, you've mastered it, it can creep up and bite you on the backside. So um, you yeah, know, the preparations gets easier. Mate, you mentioned young players. You're a huge fan of guys like Benji Marshall and. Sonny Bill Williams, you sort of passed the baton a little bit tonight, but this is the first time you come up against Sonny Bill. A bloke you're a huge fan on. Uh, what's your expectations of it? Yeah, well, you know, he's going to be coming at my edge of the ruck, so without doubt, I think their game plan will, will be to send Sonny at me as much as possible. And, you know, it's a big challenge, and, and one I'm really looking forward to is he's a big man, big mobile man, and um, I'm going to feel on my game defensively to stop him, but it's a challenge I'm looking forward to. What about the young fella on your side, Carmichael Hunt? I saw you through the week chatting to him at training, just pulling him aside. What are some of the things you've do, discussed with Carmichael? Just sort of speaking to him about uh, the way me and myself and Danny Badiris and also Darren Lockyer attack, where I'd like him to support me around the road. Um, players I think we can work over, just so we're thinking on the same wavelength. And You know, he, uh, he's only young, but he's, he's got a mature football head on his brain and he'll know where to pop up in the right positions. What kind of kid is he? Confident kid? I mean, he's a bundle of nerves at the moment, but is he naturally confident? Yeah, um, nothing seems to really phase him. He's just been around camp and um, you've got to pinch yourself early and remember he's, he's only 19, but he's been playing top-level football now for three years and, um, you know, we, we've sort of spoke as a group that he might come in for some targeting tonight, but we're going to look after him and yeah. he'll be right, he'll be up for it. Well, mate, we've just arrived at the ground at the stadium here and See the fans are filing in. Um, look, mate, on behalf of everyone in rugby league, well done. And your representative crew is your last one tonight. And on behalf of the families, your brother, mate, we're proud of you. And, uh, mate, just enjoy this one tonight, OK? Thanks, mate. Good Cheers. On you, Thanks, mate. Yes, we all endorse that. No surprise to see Andrew so relaxed. He normally performs on the big stage, and that is what he has tonight. One of the rare occasions he comes north of the border and won't be booed. And, Matthew, we've got you back off the bus. I mentioned the lead up into this game. If we get a battle on the field as good as the war of the words we've heard off the field, we are in for something outstanding. How have you seen it? It's just been fantastic, a great build-up. Like, in the city today in Brisbane, it's like an origin build-up. People are, you know, international football is back in vogue. A couple of years ago, we took the game to Newcastle because we thought that, you know, this sort of stadium, it, it wouldn't fill. Tonight it will. It'll get very, very close at least. Last year, the Kiwis winning the series is revitalised. Uh, it's a great Australian side, but this young Kiwi side, they are the future, Pete. Such a good side. A lot of subplots and talking points coming into this game. One of those, the fact that Benji Marshall, three weeks ago, dislocated the shoulder. Tonight, he's back, back playing test football. It's a big ask, isn't it? I mean, all our eyes are always on Benji. There, he's getting the, the shoulder strapped at the moment. The eyes are always on Benji, what he does with the football. But tonight, he's going to be targeted by the Aussies, no doubt. I actually spoke to his orthopaedic surgeon, Des Bocker, today, an absolute genius when it comes to shoulder surgery. His only concern was the endurance factor, which he can't cater for in rehabilitation. So my understanding is if fatigue starts to set in, that's where Benji could have a problem. The Australian team tonight, eight changes to the side, beaten 24-0 in last year's Tri-Nations in the north of England. And at fullback making his test debut, the wonderfully gifted Carl Michael Hunt. He will relish the fact he's playing on home turf here at Suncorp. On the wings, Matt King and Tamana Tahu, normally a centre for Parramatta, back on the flank tonight. The centre pairing, the St George Illawarra duo of Mark Gasnier and Matt Cooper. Gasnier will play to the right, Matt Cooper to the left. The captain and the 5-8 tonight for the 14th time leading his country, Darren Lockyer. Ten wins and one draw under his leadership. For only the second time, he will partner Andrew Johns in the number seven jersey in the halves. The back row very much in form. Locking the scrum tonight, Ben Kennedy has been superb for the Sea Eagles. Watch for his right-hand offload. Luke O'Donnell, one of the best hitters in the competition in the second row with the workaholic Nathan Hindmarsh. And up front, Willie Mason has been pushed up from the back row into the prop forward position. Petro Sivnasiva seems to have found the fountain of youth this year playing some of his best ever football. And Danny Badiris continues to be excellent in the hooking role. The interchange tonight also making his test debut. Jonathan Thurston has been outstanding for a season and a quarter. Mark O'Mealy in jersey 15. And a couple of back rowers alongside. Steve Menzies in 16. Keeps on keeping on. And Steve Simpson, the Newcastle second rower, jersey 17. Coached by Ricky Stewart at 39 years of age, 
has just about done it all. Won a premiership with the Roosters, an Origin Series win, and now the natural progression to steering his country. Yeah, he's a great coach, coach Ricky Stewart. One thing about Ricky Stewart coach teams in big games, they kick early. I think they'll do that tonight, the Aussies. They don't want to get, engage in too much physical warfare early against the Kiwis. They're a big pack of forwards. A lot of talk during the week in both camps about pride, about sacrifice. I know Ricky Stewart has pushed out. Brian McLennan, and here is his side yeah. here. He seems to be more concerned about the players, how they react off the field and what they do on the training pack. Well, I, I don't know what he's like. Well, there he's talking to Benji. That's interesting. Like Benji's starting on the bench, but don't worry, people. This guy, he'll play 50, 60 minutes tonight. He's going to be one of the keys. I don't know what he does tactically, Brian McLennan, but he's bind these guys together, and they are very good side. Let's have a look at them. If you're a New Zealand fan, it is a cracker of a side, actually. And fullback, one of the players of last year's tri Nation, Brent Webb. On the wings, they've got so much power. We've got Jake Webster. Watch, watch him go. And big Tame Tupo. In the centres, we've got Clinton Torby. He always aims up against the Aussies, and a very, very good player in Paul Fatawira. Now, the halves, and this is the question mark. This is where it lies for me if you're a uh, Kiwi supporter. You've got Nigel Van Gennar, who was captain, and at 5'8", normally a centre and Thomas Lurloy. Look, is he a number seven at this level? We're going to soon find out. Here we go. This is the key for the Kiwis. They're big, strong pack of forwards. At the back row, the brilliant Sonny Bill Williams. Isn't this exciting? David Fayologo, who's on debut, and the experienced David Kibble. Up front, we've got the uh, Kalis brothers, Jason Kalis and Nathan and Louis Anderson going to be the hooker. He's a very good player, good defender. Now the bench for the Kiwis is strong as well. We've got the charismatic Benji Marshall, one of the keys to the match. David Fayumu, watch his left foot step out of dummy half. Roy Asatasi and Frank Pritchard, who is having a great season, the coach Brian McLennan. And they are now recognised as the number one team internationally after last year's Tri-Nations. Great atmosphere at Suncorp Stadium. Hope it's coming through to you at home and enjoying it down at ground level. Ben Eichen with Andrew Voss. And in fact, Peter, in front of the goalposts at the northern end that Australia will be defending in the first half. And no doubt where Carmichael will be standing looking to defuse a few bombs in the first half from the Kiwis. Now, a man who knows exactly what it's like to make his senior rep debut as a teenager is Ben Eichen. It was 95 for Queensland as an 18-year-old. Carmichael Hunt, 19 years of age. How's he feeling tonight? Oh, he'll be nervous. It's been a tough week for him. He's been called a traitor, unpatriotic. All on top of being told you're just about to represent your nation for the first time. But Carl Michael has the qualities both as a player and as a person to come out here and really stick it to the Kiwis. Now at the Broncos, we're used to seeing Carl Michael Hunt really get up in the line. But in this Australian side, there's Johns, there's Lockyer, two of the champions of our game. Will he have the confidence to override that pair if he gets the chance? You're talking about the kid at 17 years of age who was telling Shane Webke and Gordon Tallis where to go and what to do. Confidence isn't an issue. Either will be getting himself involved in this match tonight. All right, that's the last word on Carmichael Hunt. Now the last word on the match from Phil Gould. Thank you, Andrew. You know, the greatest honour this game can bestow on any individual is to choose that player to play for his country. And in Australia, that means wearing the mighty green and gold. Look at that. Just the thought of wearing that jersey and playing for Australia would make you want to play your best every time you got the opportunity and not take it for granted. Now, I'm sure this Australian team in preparation for this match has been reminded exactly what and, wh and who they're playing for. They play for the fans. They play for their family and friends. They play for their teammates and coaches back at their club because they've helped them get through to this level. Tonight they play for each other. It's so important. The best team will win this test match. And they also play for themselves. They don't want to let themselves down. They want to play with courage. They want to cover themselves with glory and with pride. And I think the Australians will do that tonight. They will know that this jersey has great tradition. It has great history. The players that have worn it in the past, they won't want to let that down. I think they'll put their best foot forward tonight. After all, this is not a cold, wet, slippery field in the north of England. This is Suncorp Stadium, Brisbane, Australia. This is a home ground. This is their home crowd. They'll be playing for these people. They'll be playing in front of their family and friends. They're not going to let anyone down. I think that New Zealand will get what, to know what it's like to play against the best tonight. Speaking of the best, the best commentator in the business, Ray Warren. So thank you, Phil Gould, and thanks to Peter Sterling and Ben Eichen and Andrew Voss and, of course, the Johns brothers. Nigel Van Gennar will be the on-field captain in civilian clothes, Ruben Wickey leading the Kiwis out, and now Darren Lockyer for the 14th time, Captains Australia. Just the second time that he's teamed up in the halves with Andrew Johns. It's a marvellous reception for the number seven. His 21st test match, his final representative game. On the ground that he turned into his very own here during the Origin Series last year. Andrew Johns, a little wave to the crowd. Many Novacastrians have made the trip here. 
It is the 95th clash between these two countries. And probably this is the most anticipated test of all. There may be some that would disagree with that, but certainly I can't remember a test match in my 40 years of commentary between Australia and the Kiwis that has attracted the publicity that this match has. And that really is the overflow of Australia losing in the Tri-Nations in November. The New Zealand anthem to be sung by 19-year-old Saya Vaiusu. This is called God Defend New Zealand. supporters in at Suncorp Stadium they're expecting a crowd probably a record test crowd here now we move to young Megan Longhurst she's 11 years of age singing Advance Australia Fair tonight. So the Australians, they're ready. They've been pumping up here all day. It's been quite a hot day in Brisbane. A beautiful night though for Rugby League. And of course we wait now for the traditional native challenge. The Haka. And that is David Kidwell who will lead the Haka. As I mentioned, Nigel Vanganar, the on-field captain with Ruben Wickey a late withdrawal today.
Got to love it. You, you really have to love it. In fact, I saw it at the recent Commonwealth Games for the first time in swimming when the New Zealanders performed the Harker whenever they won a medal. Needless to say, we saw the Harker and plenty of it. Willie Mason in eight. Well, I think two, two of the best renditions we've heard of the national anthems as well leading into this one. Everything is set up. Gary Longhurst, of course. Gus, I think you played against him some time back. Yeah, back in the 80s. Great bloke. What a night for young Megan. She sung here at the opening match of the year, Broncos versus Cowboys. But as I said, this crowd, they're expecting it to be... That's Ashley Klein, the referee. They're expecting this crowd probably to break all records for a test match between Australia and New Zealand. John's kicks off in his final representative game. Nathan Kalis, the late inclusion, bringing it back. Met by a shoulder charge, ironically, for Nathan Hindmarsh. To the blind side for Williams. 20 metre line, eastern side of the ground. That's Kidwell. Held by Mason and Kennedy, and Hindmarsh is in there. With the posterior of Sivan Asivar as well. Another run for Kalis. This is how he's been playing his football the last few weeks. So the 15 is Fayalongo. Apparently that's the way he wants to pronounce Fayalongo from South Sydney. Clearing kick by Brentwood. Now with Kurt Michael. His mum watching from Rarotonga in the Cook Islands. She's nursing a gravely ill mother. She's been there on every, every match occasion for Carmichael, but tonight she's watching over there. And our thoughts go out to her as well. A seven receiver plunges the Australian attack up towards the 40-metre line. Met and pulled down by Fayalongo. Here's Danny Baderas wrapped up and flung to the ground by the same man with a help there from Lula White. And a penalty. First of the game, hand on the ball. And what about that little man on screen, Thomas Lulawai? Went for a shoulder charge on Petro Sivanasiva and immediately followed up with one on Danny Badiris. But they didn't want to give away a penalty early. It gives great field position to the Australian team inside the 30 with a full set of six. Eight changes into the Australian side that was beaten 24-0 by the Kiwis in Leeds at the back end of the Tri-Nations. Now Badiris uses the short side and the 11 is Luke O'Donnell. And Australia are 15 metres away from the Kiwis line. The tackler was Anderson, but there is a dummy before going to sit in a Siva. Petro pulled down about eight metres away from the New Zealand line. And another penalty. Klein penalising the New Zealanders and calling Torpy out. Yeah, now, firstly, what happened there, you've gone with the arm anyway. You went with the arm, you obviously missed. Okay, let's just cut it out. We've got no cheap shots at all. Yeah, exactly. See, Rabbits, it's one thing to be pumped up for a big game. It's one thing to be aggressive, but you've got to be smart about it too. And the one thing New Zealand cannot afford to do is invite Australia down to attacking zones with silly penalties. It's got to be controlled aggression. In the early stages, it's better to show your aggression with the ball yeah, rather than without it. Defend smart and dish your punishment out when you're running the ball. That's what Australia have done. And you also know that the referee is going to look to put his stamp on the game. The referee tonight, he's a Parramatta junior, been living in the UK for six years. He was part of the New South Wales Rugby League referees development squad until 2001. He was named Super League referee of the year last year as Johns, which put on first points and does so. Johns kicking down towards the southern end of the ground. Australia take first points, Benji Marshall starting from the bench. 2-0 Australia, Andrew Voss sideline with those people, thousands of them behind him. As good as atmosphere as we've had for a test match as I can recall, Ray, getting right behind the green and gold here tonight. So many battles within battles, goal kicking, same story. Andrew Johns for Australia has only missed five kicks in the NRL this year. Brent Webb is the first choice kicker for the Kiwis tonight, not even the first choice kicker at the Warriors. Tony Martin has the job over there, so real pressure on the Kiwis number one. And this referee, yeah. Rabbit's yeah. Ashley Klein. I played with his father at Penrith back in the 70s, Johnny Klein. Good player, too. So just a delay while a ball could be found for Brent Webb to restart this game. Opening section. Three minutes 
Two penalties, Australia. Penalty goal for Johns. And 2-0 to the home side. The mission to regain world supremacy in rugby league. Kick off down into that northeastern corner and Carmichael Hunt gives it away for Seven Asiba. And Seven Asiba is tackled about 15 metres back into the field of play. Now for Hindmarsh. And Hindmarsh is tackled now, still inside the Australian 20 metre line. The dearest with some nice little changes around the, the back of the ruck from dummy half. That's Mason. He mightn't have thought so as he is met by a four-man defensive pattern from New Zealand. Hindmarsh tries to put Cooper down the left side. And Cooper to play the ball now. So Cooper playing on the left and Gasnier on the right in attack for Australia. Johns, it stayed in the air for quite some time and Webb was able to bring it back out to the 30 metre line, Kiwis end of the ground. That's the Milton Road end of the ground with Australia guarding the Caxton Street end of the ground. This is Tupo, the Brisbane Bronco who's playing his debut test match and now Jason Kalis who now plays for St Helens, the almost unbeatable St Helens in the Premier League in England. Anderson now is inside the 40 metre line and Torpy who's bagged a couple of hat-tricks of tries against the Australians, is away from Dummy Hart and takes it inside the 30-metre line, and that's a penalty against the Aussies. High shot on Torpy. And that's what the coach Brian McLennan will want from Clinton Torpy, such a devastating player when he doesn't make mistakes. He just put the head down there. It's a high shot from Willie Mason that has been pulled up. Nigel Vungana comes across and makes a decision that we will try and take two points here, and this is what Andrew Voss was talking about. He is a part-time kicker at best, Brent Webb, as we see another angle of the high shot from the number eight. Have a look at the crowd here tonight, Rabbits. I have not seen a crowd for a test match like this since I was a kid. We used to go out to the cricket ground, watch Australia versus Great Britain, sit in the back of the Sheridan stand. Huge crowds in those days. International football has come alive because of New Zealand's win in the Tri-Series last year, Australia losing a series for the first time in three decades. It's tremendous for the game. 46,355 is the record of test attendance in Brisbane. And there's the shot for penalty goal to level, but it bounces back into the field of play, and it's all stations alert for Australia. With the number five, Tamana Tahu, coming away with it. And dousing whatever fire there might have been. Now Cooper, 25 metres away from the Australian line, with Mason now trying to roll it out, and he does. He gets it out to the 30 metres. New Zealand getting up very quickly in defence. Australia not really making a lot of ground with some of these forward players, and that's to be expected at the early part of the game. Torpy that tackle on Sivan Asiva. Now Kennedy, also in his farewell test match tonight, is five metres short of halfway with Nathan Kalis, one of three New Zealand defenders. Badira sweeping it away to Johns, and Johns puts in a kick and keeps it low. Webb is across there, anticipation was good, and now he runs at King and Gaznia, defending on the right side for Australia. Webb playing it on the 30-metre line now then, and it is Topu who takes it just outside 30. This is Fadawira, a dummy half, and now Fayalongo. No gaining ground, both the forward sets are meeting the attack almost on the advantage line they might be just getting across it by a couple of meters but at the moment they're making heavy weather of it as Kalis plays it and it goes from Anderson and goes away to Kidwell and Kidwell now will be asked to play the ball just on the Australian side of halfway 2-0 a penalty goal after three minutes then to Andrew Johns as Lulawai who plays for the London Harlequins and has been in very good form puts it over the back for Tahu and Tahu is tackled just inside 20 with Hunt going up as his dummy half, the youngest player out there tonight, Carmichael Hunt. On to Lockyer, long ball away and blow for Gaznia, and Gaznia really well marked. Right up in his face was Fatawira. He would know how dangerous, oh, King picked up and pummeled into the ground. Good tackle. And again, it was that second row of Fayalonga. He's pulled off some very big shots early in the game. Now, Kennedy is on the receiving end of another one, and that one from Vangadar has hurt him. Alexander Williams has actually appealed that he might have lost the football here. And Ben Kennedy, one of the toughest roosters in the competition, he doesn't stay down unless he's picked up something. A couple of big hits here, and this is what we expect from the New Zealand side. Alonga going in low. 
This time it's Vanganar picking Kennedy up. Williams comes in from the far side. Whether he's calling for the lost ball, no, well, that's what he is. He's saying that Kennedy's lost the football. Fourth tackle, Darren. Will be fourth against the Australians. So Kennedy is looking better with every second. We'll take a break and come back, and hopefully he'll be okay in just a moment. Right, next year, move up, Jason. Welcome back to the Test match, the Bundaberg Test match, the one-off Test match that we have each, each and every year at this time of the year against the Kiwis. Seven receiver playing it, Badira's giving it away, John's putting the right foot to it. This time it's a much bigger kick and it's higher and it's bouncing away awkwardly. And over there with it now is Webster, the Melbourne winger, and he will play the ball 20 metres away from his own try line. Vangada, not hard to recognise with the, the hair braided for the Knights. As it's played over there by Sonny Bill Williams, it's come away to Jason Kalis, and he's going backwards under the defence. Good shot, that one from Gaznia in particular, Luke O'Donnell taking a part in it. And now it's Clinton Torpy, met by Hindmarsh and pulled down just outside the 40, together with Kennedy. So New Zealand matching it blow for blow at the moment with the Australians. Penalties have been a little bit more friendly, though, to the Australians, although Webb did have a chance to equalise and could not. Fielded by Hunt, he's coming outside the 20 metre line, now he's straight. Yeah, the chase is good for New Zealand. Both sides playing it fairly safe, we've only seen the one real spread, and that was to Mark Gasnier, who was handled well by Fatawira. Maybe Andrew Johnson Lockie will start to play a little bit wider as Tamana Tahu tries to promote something for Cooper. Again, the inside defence is effective. Tahu coming up on the inside of Cooper again on that occasion. They seem happy to rotate out there. On the left side for Australia, Mason a good run, Badiris a scamper, and he's caught Jason Kalis napping at marker and takes it down 35 metres away from the New Zealand line. Carmichael Hunt away to Andrew Johns, back into the middle, forward pass. I thought to Sivan Asiba, it's been allowed to go. 25 metres out, five tackles gone for the Green and Golds. Johns puts in a kick, taken down by Torpy, but it wasn't late. Now it's fielded in the in goal and is coming back to the 20 for the restart. That was good pressure there from New Zealand on tackle five to get up on Andrew Johns quickly. He wanted the kick high to the right. He had to change it back to the left. Couldn't get it where he wanted it. Good pressure from the Kiwis. So the ball played there by Sonny Bill Williams and coming away is the centre three quarter Paul Fatawira. Fatawira playing it on the 40 metre line. His own into the ground. Fayalongo not going anywhere at all. Badiris, who's very strong in defence with Luke O'Donnell. Now it's on to Nathan Kalis, then to Thomas Lulawai. Away it goes to Kidwell. And Kidwell is tackled right on the halfway mark by Badiris and Kennedy. And then now from Anderson, it's found the 5 8 and captain Vangana. Nigel to play the ball 40 metres out, tackled by Petro Sivanasiva. Anderson a dummy half one more time. And this time to Lulawai, who really takes a long time to put some kicks in. It's a. Uh, it's quite hesitant, really, his style. Here's a problem for Australia, but King goes back to clean it up. Poor pass there from Carmichael Hunt, with the kicking game from Thomas, Thomas Lulawai, leaving a lot to be desired. The Kiwis have the football, Fatawira. Can he get over? No, they've held him up. A half a metre short. Lulawai, a dummy half then. With the Kiwis on the attack, and a charge from Fayalongo. Reaches for the line. They're going to inspect it. It's going to the video referee. Congratulations all round, and most importantly, the try scorer has got up believing he scored. He generally knows best. A mistake from the Australians on their own line. The long gate comes down. Hasn't put the football down yet. Oh, I think the hand is under the football. I don't think it's got to the ground. He nearly lost it too, Peter. He nearly lost it on the way down, regathered it, whether or not it touched Carmichael Hunt on the way down to force and knock on. I think he's come down short of the line there. Now the hand will come underneath it. Oh, well you can't tell from that angle. I think the first angle is the best. There's no doubt he came down short of the line. And to his credit, I don't think it's a double movement. I think he's come down and there's no real movement apart from the, 
the actual progression in the tackle that has seen the football get to the line, but unfortunately for the Kiwis, it may be that there is an Australian arm underneath, and it could be the number 11, Luke O'Donnell's. Yeah, I think it is. I think his hand's got underneath the ball right at the right time. The ball came down just before the line. This should be a play the ball, though. The Kiwis will still be on the attack. This will be the third tackle. No try to play the ball. They've got some left, though. Can he play the ball's left here? So the running is that he actually made the end goal. On the third tackle. Wait. And Wait. Faye Longo to play the ball back to Louis Anderson. Off to the right to Nathan Kalis. And now away to Lulawa. He turns it back on the inside for Torpy. And Heinmarsh and Kennedy are there with Sivan Asiva to pull him down. They're right in the middle of the ground, the Kiwis. They're 10 away from the line. Lulawai challenges the line and David Kidwell. Kidwell has scored. Kidwell has scored for New Zealand. It opened up. It was a lovely time pass from Thomas Lulawai. And for the second time in two minutes, New Zealand have scored by using their decoy runner to give the ball to, and it has totally fooled the Australian defence. Good, strong, straight run from Kidwell. And a beautifully timed pass has caught Australia napping. This is the turnover. Carmichael Hunt ran up, got a ball on to Matt King, who I think must lose it in the tackle. It's actually a steal. Tommy Turbo got the ball off him, and from there, Fatawira we nearly scored. Now, watch the decoy run at Kidwell as Lulawai goes across. Beautiful play. Johns goes up on the fullback web. And Kidwell goes through the gap that he leaves to score a beautiful try. It's almost a reverse decoy. You don't often see this. They've actually overread the play and gone for the second man player who could have got the football, but it's gone to the straight runner. That takes any obstruction out of play. As the conversion misses from Brett Webb. Well, this might really be their Achilles. The goal kicking, they lead 4-2, and they have been quite brilliant in the early exchanges, but Webb has missed again. Their play's been very simple, Rabbits. It was in the Tri-Series last year. Lulawai's a very clever little ball player. The Australians were fooled there by the decoy runner who actually ended up with the ball, and quite deliberately so. Brilliant play. Johns placing the ball. The 17 for Australia are about to come into the game. That's Stephen Simpson. Teammate of Andrew Johns at the Newcastle Knights and the man at the moment, Lulawai, takes it on the legs before picking it up and being tackled 18 metres away from the New Zealand line. They lead four points to two. Jason Kalis now, 22 metres out from his own line. Taken down by Heinmarsh and Badiris together with O'Donnell. He plays the ball back to Anderson and Anderson away to Faye Longa. Just inside the 30 metre line now with Australia's Gaznier and Sivan Asiba, the chief tacklers on that occasion. Now Kalis takes it ahead. They meet him, as I said, just a little bit over the ad line and pull him to the ground. Sivan Asiba and O'Donnell both working hard. Little mousetrap play at the back of the play, the ball. And uh, tackle was Paul Fowler. Now that's the second one in the game so far. They both work quite well, although there's a back slam there from Mason and Hindmarsh as, as Webb's kicked it straight to Norlewai, who kicks it straight to Carmichael Hunt. The Swans in action here in Brisbane. That's the way to pass it. I'll tell you what, some of Carl Michael Hunt's runs tonight have been very courageous. He knows he's going to be sorted out, but he's got no fear about running the ball back. Gasnier now, taking matters into his own hands. Well, he had to, really, because there was nobody back there with him. He was a dummy half, and he had no option but to take the run. Now Luke O'Donnell, who's been busy in defence, takes a hit up. Nine metres from the halfway line, he's taken down by Louis Anderson. Steve Simpson on for Willie Mason, Kennedy goes to the halfway. Right in the middle of the ground now for Ben Kennedy. To play it back to Badiris, a former teammate, and then away to another. In the shape of Andrew Johns, who puts it down delicately. And it's picked up by Webb, and Webb tries to get back. They'll try and pick him up and put him back, and they do! They pick him up and force him in goal. That's why Andrew Johns has the best kicking game in the business. Not only is he a good kicker of the ball, he knows when to kick. The defence was up in their face. He rallied four troops on the left-hand side and said, let's get Brett Webb on his own back there with no one to pass the ball to. They just pick him up and throw him back to where he came from. That's brilliant stuff from Andrew Johns. Great support from the chasers. He made a mistake there, Brent Webb. He stayed high. He gave them a shot. He had to get down low, almost dive at their legs to make sure that that didn't happen. Another poor restart there. Will not hitting them well as King takes it, only 35 out. 
Joaquin, 25 metres out from the southern uh, try line, which is guarded by New Zealand. Steve Simpson with his first run of the night, taken down by Anderson and Kalis. Jason, now it's on for Andrew to give it away to Darren Locke. He'll take him late, joining in. just ran out of numbers there to the New Zealand team. A good decoy run from the, from the Australians. But quite simple in the end and it came from putting completion rates back to back. As we freeze it there, you can see that this man is an excellent decoy run. He goes through and holds players up. Then all of a sudden there's only one defender out wide up against a couple of attacking players as play continues. The second man pass, Carmichael Hunt, offloads to Matt Cooper. In the final last year, the Australians only completed on five occasions. Never controlled the football. If they put sets back to back as they did then, they are going to be very, very dangerous. We saw that same play a few weeks ago here with the Broncos. Second man play from Lockyer out the back to Carmichael Hunt and just outnumbered them on the outside. Matt Cooper had very little to do other than run around and put the ball down. Tremendous play and a little bit too easy there for the Australians. Danger signs in the Kiwi defence close to their line. That happened all too easily for them. Andrew there from eight metres in. Touch judges have a more flags up. Australia go a further two in front. Matthew John sideline. You know, one of the things that made this try was the subtlety. You watch Andrew Johns when he gets the ball. He just goes to the line a little bit of just a couple of steps. And what that does the defence, they can't slide off him. Sometimes at Brisbane, they give, they just give the ball straight to Lockyer, and it just puts pressure on the second receiver. A nice subtle play by Andrew Johns. Stay with me, Matthew. How do you feel tonight? Are you nervous for your brother? Uh, yes, a little bit, but uh, a little disappointed to it in the first try scorer. Is that on the fall? It's a penalty in the middle of the halfway to Australia. So things have gone pear-shaped immediately, or just suddenly, I should say, for the Kiwis. Their yes. kicking game, Peter, their goal kicking, their line drop out. Yeah, I said Thomas Little like the, the line drop out. I think it was actually Brent Webb, but none of their kickers are hitting the ball well, and that's a huge problem in the goal kicking and general play department tonight. That's a mistake you cannot make at international level, putting one out over the sideline, especially when it was so important after conceding points to get to the other end and come up with a good defensive set. Seven receiver then, taking it 23 metres away from the Kiwis line. Australia establishing... An 8-4 lead at the moment. Badiris John switches the point of the attack across to the blind side to O'Donnell. And O'Donnell is held there in a three-man Kiwi tackle. Finishing up with him was Fatawira and Lulawai. Lucky to escape a penalty, actually. Badiris uh, gives it away. And here's C Steve Simpson on an inside run, running off Andrew Johns. And Badiris now waits for an open side play to Andrew Johns. Wide ball out to Darren Lockyer. A two-man... Um, attack goes forward towards the New Zealand centre and it was Ben Kennedy who's tackled now. Three metres out from the line, from Badiris to Johns, they sweep it back behind Sip and Asiba. Lockyer gets a decoy run behind him, I think it was Simpson, and then he puts a kick in that goes dead in goal. Yeah, poor kick there from Lockyer, that was a spur of the moment thing. He got the ball and wanted runners on the outside in position, but they'd overrun him. And then at the last moment thought he'd do something for himself. More often than not, that fails and a cheap turnover to the Kiwis. Chupuna. 38 metres away from his own line. And play is here on the western side of the ground at the moment as Louis Anderson, the dummy half, unloads for Roy Asatasi, who's out there now from the Canterbury Bulldogs Club in Sydney. As we are reminded that we're going live across into New Zealand and, of course, into the UK tonight as players on the halfway line it goes from anderson goes to lulawai and he drops a kick back down towards carmichael hunt very friendly and now matt king from melbourne starts to rev up the motor and he gets it outside the 20 meter line yeah very friendly that is not good enough and it is handing simple things to the australian team now we're at the 20 minute mark now you've got to wonder when marshall might come into the team and he really needs to take over the attacking kicking game as cooper gets one-on-one -on -one, can't beat the opposite player 
Andrew Voss down on the sideline. On exactly that thing, looking over at the Kiwi bench right now. Still no movement as far as getting Marshall onto his feet. Ben Eichen also on the sideline. Would you be sending him out right now? Ball from Tahu to Simpson. Can't answer the question. Got a bit too much to do in the cockpit. It's gone away from Johns. Long ball to O'Donnell. He's been creamed by Tupo. Picked up by King. Can't handle the ball. Loose ball off the feet of New Zealand. And referee Klein rules knock on. <laughs> Tupo has come up with three shots in a row. The last one on Marco Mealy, who had been on the field one second and picked up the loose ball. In defence on debut. He's only got a double barrel shot, Gun. He got three shots out of it. It was like the coach said, Marco Murley, quick get out there, there's a loose ball. He'll come flying in off the bench when King drops this one, and Murley will come from nowhere. There he is off the bench, get that ball. Andrew sideline. No, I think Tamo Tupo had his eyes on Ben Eichen. Was that a put a shot on him as well? What about Benji Marshall? Would you have him out there now? Get him out there. Look, with the lack of quality options they got here on the fifth and last play, he's got a good kicking game. Get him on there now. He'll also bring some, some real direction for this mob, and they'll also add some variety in attack. Comments from Ben Eichen down on the sideline with Matthew Johns and Andrew Voss tonight in our test coverage of the Bundaberg Rum Test Match from here at Suncorp Stadium. Jason Kalis, Thomas Lulawai. Lulawai built very close to the ground, ducking under a couple of the big forwards. Now from Webb. It's gone away at one-hander. On through Vangana to Williams, and Williams is tackled. Pulled down by Cooper over there. Did he come up with the boots? He did not, according to the referee. Now it's back and away for Webb to put a kick across. Let's hope this one's a better one. Up goes Big Gaznia, and Gaznia comes down with it. 15 metres away from the Australian line. King, again, is challenged by Tupu. And eventually it's Torpy who makes the tackle. And King plays it back to Johns. Johns gets it away to O'Mealy. And the ogre is on. Now for O'Donnell. Pumping away with those legs, getting it out. 35 metres from the Australian line. Australia eight, New Zealand four. In front of a big crowd here at Suncorp. Johns, Lockyer, Lockyer, Cooper, Cooper tries to splice through but he's tackled over there he gets a very quick play the ball on and one of the New Zealanders slow to rise over there I think it's Webster as um, Johns puts a kick in that will find the touch line so we'll take a break with a scrum to go down Marshall still to come into the game it's a four point ball game in favour of Australia at the moment welcome back to the test the test stadium Suncorp Stadium, 8-4 Australia. Peter Sterling. And before the break, we saw Benji Marshall warming up on the bike. It may well be a double blow landed here by the New Zealand team, and that will be much more formidable. David Fayumu coming into the action. He is very good around the dummy half area, very deceptive. And with Marshall out there adding some variety, all of a sudden there might be some more pressure put on the Australian defence with players who can use the football. Let's get in. I don't know where to tack in the Kiwis. I don't know what position they're playing at the moment. This is Clinton Torpy then. Ball coming away. Klein says play on. Benira sees a, a chance out wide. Zero. Move. That's Clinton right. Torpy. No need to throw. So Tahu plays it and now it's Simpson who takes it within three metres of the Kiwi line. To be played back to Badira, so Mealy runs the decoy. Johns then turns it inside. Hindmarsh up the middle, and Hindmarsh is taken down by uh, Sonny Bill Williams. Then from Badira, he cuts out Johns, goes to Lockyer, then to O'Donnell, and O'Donnell is held. In an upright tackle originally before being put down by the Kiwis, who are struggling at the moment. They really are struggling to hold Australia out again. Johns away to uh, Carmichael Hunt who was reversing there for a couple of strides. He will play at seven metres away from the line. Play back to Badira, a blindside shot, Gaznia, Gaznia, Gaznia has scored! Mark Gaznia has scored the Australian try. It is 12 points to four now. And on the Bundy Run Telestrator, it will show you again too easy. Thomas Goulawai actually marks up on the inside of Mark Gaznia. That is suicide. It all came from the Clinton Torpy poor pass. No need to throw that kind of football. Unfortunately, it's the kind of mistake that plays Clinton Torpy. Now, as we freeze it there, there is Thomas Lulawai. That is the man he is marking already. One of the best players in the game on his feet as play continues is on the outside. That forces the man on the outside, Tupo, to get interested when he needed to stay out with his man. But Thomas Lulawai, three on three, 
gave the opportunity to Mark Gasnia, and a player of his ability is always going to be good enough to take it. Peter, it's brilliant play by the dummy half, Danny Badiris. Absolutely sensational. This is what makes Badiris such a good player. You ask anyone in Australia who the dangers are for New Zealand tonight, they'll say Andrew Johns, Darren Lockyer, they're the playmakers. This is a man that trusts his own instincts. He knows the abilities of the players around him too. He will play away from Johns, he will play away from Lockyer and go to his support in Gaznia to produce a try. That was brilliant dummy half play. Andrew Johns from the sideline. Two tries to Australia then at the 17th and the 24th minute. As Johns from the sideline is bringing it around, but it's not coming around quickly enough. So the score remains at 12 points to four after 27 minutes. Cooper at 17, Gazzi at 24. Kid will score for New Zealand at the 12th minute. But one of the most significant points to come out of this test match at this point in time is the dreadful kicking game, both goal kicking and kicks in general play for New Zealand but they probably knew what they were taking into the game anyway so they got themselves to blame in that regard. Well that was always going to be what they had but the one thing against the Australians, if you're going to beat them and be competitive against them you've got to make sure you limit their opportunities and the Kiwis have given them great football at the right end of the field and the Australians will accept that gleefully. Marsh it was who played the ball before it went through from Johns and it's gone to O'Donnell and O'Donnell is met there by Lulawai together with Lewis Anderson and they are on the Australian 30 metre line and uh, there's a ball dropped in the play the ball so referee Klein he was voted Premier League referee of the year Luke O'Donnell it was who knocked on he was voted Premier League referee of the year 2005 so the scrum 30 metres away from the Australian line. Benji Marshall warming up, about to come on. We would expect in the next couple of minutes as it goes away for Fatawira to run. First play from the scrum, 28 metres away from the Australian line as Fayumu goes out from dummy half, the Cowboys player who, as Peter said, is explosive out from dummy half, particularly at the back end of each half. He has to be watched. And here's Jason Kalis now, 12 metres out from the Australian line. Can they crack them as easily as they did last time? They visited down here. Asatasi, strong from Canterbury. Seven metres out from the goal line at the Caxton Street end of this ground, this magnificent ground. Away from Fayumu into Lulawa. Lulawi onto Vandana. Vandana onto Kidwell. He kicks in behind. believe it you can't believe it that is phenomenal under that sort of pressure and let me tell you he's the only one that would think about it Tamata Tahu Matty Johns have you ever seen anything like that what about this Gus the time's coming here comes Benji Marshall the Kiwi supporters go up this is the biggest test of his young career we know what he can do with the ball it's without the ball he's going to be tested good luck Benji Asatasi center of the ground put down and the penalty goes to New Zealand Australia, it's right in front. Well, this will be a very interesting display of, of the mentality of the New Zealanders. Do they take the easy points they have? I don't know. I don't know if that's positive enough. They've got some momentum at the moment. They've got Marshall about to come into the game. This makes it 12-6. We go to the other end of the field. Still a converted try behind. They could have landed a blow there by going to 12-10 if they were good enough. Well, I don't think they knew that Benji Marshall was on the sideline. I really don't. Here's the kick from Kidwell. Watch Tamana Tahu put the hand out and just flick it back to Carmichael Hunt. Said, here you go, son. Get us out of the end goal here. I'm going the other way. That's brilliant. So that was that, and now we come back to pictures of Marshall taking the field. Benji Marshall, his second international appointment. I'm just thinking, Rabbits, the players on the field mustn't have known that he was on the sideline ready to come on. Ten metres out with six tackles up your sleeve. Would have been a nice place for Marshall to start. So we'll take a break at the test match from Brisbane. 31 minutes down, six-point ball game, Australia leading. Test match football, the Bundaberg Rum League test between Australia and New Zealand. The Rugby League World Champions on the right of your screen, the black and white Kiwis. They got that title away from Australia. 
and deservedly so in the Tri-Nations at Leeds in November of last year with a 24-0 spanking. Eight changes to the Australian side and they lead by 12 points to six as we watch a half an hour of the game go. Ten metres out from their own line, the ball played by Williams and Williams has a dummy half of the shape of Webster who is tackled inside 20. Now Van Gennar, and Van Gennar pursued by Heinmarsh with Cooper blocking that left side Australian defence. 32 minutes gone, Nathan Heinmarsh, 20 tackles, he's at it again. And this looks like Roy Asotasi underneath the tackle of Kennedy and O'Mealy and also Simpson, it was Asotasi. Ball away to Nathan Kalis who I fancy came back on to replace his brother, Jason who's gone to the benches. Now they go to the right to the boot of Marshall. And Marshall puts a, a towering kick down towards a youngster that he pleaded with to play for New Zealand in the shape of Carmichael Hunt. And he runs straight down Benji Marshall, chases his kick and does the tackling. Says to his teammates, I'm all right, I'm here to play. Now it's King who's tackled inside the 30 metre line. Centre of the ground. And away goes from dummy half to Marmatahu who's been in sparkling form since he came back with the Parramatta side. Badira's on for Kennedy. Kennedy running it at Marshall. And you're going to see a lot of this. You'll see a lot of this with the big forwards running their plays at Benji Marshall. As Badiris uses a blindside shot and John's dummies back on the inside. The Carmichael Hunt puts a kick in. Cooper picks it up. And Cooper's picked up and tackled. 18 metres away from the Kiwis line. Lovely play by Andrew Johns. He's on the right side now. Out it comes to Lockyer. Lockyer going out wide with an expansive game. And it's fielded and uh, forced over there by Cooper. With Luke O'Donnell breathing down his throat. Enterprising, enterprising play from both teams there. And a real wrap for Nathan Kalis. It was the player who came across and covered the kick. Nice little kick through by Andrew Johns, taken by Matt Cooper. And there's Kalis, the front rower, coming back to cover things up. And then on the other side of the field, it's Tupo, who's, who's done very well tonight. I know Wayne Bennett was critical that he was told that he was in this team before club football last week, but he doesn't look out of place out there tonight. Line drop out again from New Zealand is very ordinary by today's standards. And Steve Simpson is going to be tackled on the first and a penalty to Australia. That was silly. Thomas Lulawai lifting into a dangerous position. You would have heard the call from referee Klein. Badiris opting to go for more than two as they go across now and finding Lockyer in the centre of the ground. Sonny Bill and Nigel Vungenar going in with Nathan Kalis. Badiris away for O'Mealy, away for Johns. Johns gets the ball away, out to Simpson. Simpson onto O'Donnell. O'Donnell going for the corner, but he's pulled down, not held. Tupu has to dive on him. And they're a metre out from the line, the Australians. King, a long ball on the bounce taken by Johns. He dummies to O'Mealy, goes wide out to Heinmarsh. Heinmarsh around one, comes to another, and is pulled down 17 away from the line. Was Heinmarsh interfered with? Yes, he was. The tackler came up with the boot, another penalty on Australia. Well, I'm surprised that Danny Vaduris is pointing to the post here. They've already turned down two points, and I thought that was the difference between the sides. The other end, New Zealand, no hesitation in taking the easy points. Before this penalty, when they had one, Danny Vaduris, quick play, quick tap, restart, confident. And now with the leg pull there from Nigel Vunganar, the Australians prepared to go more than a converted try in front. So especially, too, when your opposition player so deliberately gives a penalty away you've got to be thinking to yourself they're under pressure you know when you deliberately give a penalty away in front of your post you're virtually saying please kick for goal i don't think we can hold you out i'm surprised they're kicking for goal but an eight point lead in a test match it's a good lead so johns has no trouble in raising the flags down at the southern end andrew boss sideline yeah, and a few shakes of the head on the sideline from ben Eichen from matthew johns about first the kiwis going for goal to get it to 12-6 matthew johns what do you think well i think that the combination of Lockyer and johns is starting to find form a little bit they're starting to find their rhythm this is a very dangerous period for the kiwis on with the boys if they're going to win this they're going to be positive and that's how they won the tri-nations Ruben wiki there on the left of your screens the captain who had to pull out of this match a match that I think would have been his 51st in test colours. Nigel Vungana, the next highest capped of the Kiwis. It must be a very bad hamstring injury for Ruben Wicky to miss tonight. I remember he played a Canberra final, with something akin to a broken ankle almost. So it would be very tough for him to be sitting on the sideline. Mason, well tackled by Clinton Torpy, right on the Australian 30 metre line we are. 
Australia out with this eight point margin now. 12 metres from the halfway. It's played by Ben Kennedy and Badiris finds no markers at all. Nobody at one, nobody at two. And he picked up 12 metres over the halfway line. Carmichael Hunt away for Andrew Johns to the right foot. And he's got a spiralling torpedo punt going down into the end goal. And as they do, they bounce end on end over the dead ball line. So coming up at half time, Holden half time tonight, the Carlton mid strength, uh, mid strength player cam. That'll feature Andrew Johns and Benji Marshall, plus the Bundy big plays with Andrew Voss, Phil Gould, and Ben Eichen. That's at half time in Holden half time from Suncourt Stadium tonight. And uh, they're looking to break the record Brisbane crowd against Brisbane against uh, New Zealand in a test match. We're looking for figures somewhere up around 47,000 to create a new record. Fayumu was the dummy half, Fatawira the ball player, and this is Louis Anderson, who's got the play up to the halfway line. Two tries to one, 17th minute, 24th minute. The St George uh, Sanders were able to score, Cooper and Gaznia. And, of course, the other try was scored by New Zealand's David Kidwell, who absolutely strolled in for a try against a uh, defence that misread the play totally from Australia. Now Nathan Callis who plays at 33 metres away from the Australian line for Webb to go and give the pass on to Marshall. Marshall's kept fielded by Hunt, and Hunt basically surrendering, and that was the smart thing to do. Well, that's what Brett Webb should have done at the other end of the field earlier in the game when he was taken back into the end goal. King across from his right wing to lend whatever support he can over on the far side of the ground. He's a big lump of a thing from Melbourne. A very good player. Now Tahu tries to light step his way through, but... Now the Australians are looking down the barrel of the third tackle and they're still inside their 10 metre line. Here's Kennedy lunging at the opposition. Three of them have got in the ball precariously held by Kennedy. He'll play it back for Danny Badiris as we get a shot of the Australian bench and Big Mason tries to crack through. He's held there and then he fell over under the weight of Badiris actually losing his footing as Johns says let's get out of here as the ball goes down and bounces on its point to Webster back on his own 20 metre line he comes outside the 30 we're down the park making the, the tackle is the kicker Andrew Johns now the ball comes away to Benji Muscle oh gee look forward to me Tupu couldn't handle it Kennedy picked it up scooped it away to Gaznia Gaznia invites them in now he runs away Tupu lined him up with the shoulder it went missing and Gaznia is on the ground 30 metres away from the Kiwi line Inside the final two minutes of the first half, and this is a huge couple of minutes for the New Zealanders as Carmichael Hunt, good ball to Cooper, but he's well contained. Vangana over there, along with the winger Webster. Hunt a dummy half, on to Kennedy now. And Kennedy works towards centre ground, finds Badiris, he goes away to Darren Lockyer. Mason a decoy, now it's gone on to Simpson. Simpson is able to get the ball away, it bounced backwards, it's knocked on, I fancy. No, the referee said play on, New Zealand ball. Torpy will play the ball inside 10. 10 metres in from the Western touchline. And a 14 to 6 scoreboard in favour of Australia as Roy Asatasi is met and pulled down by Steve Simpson and he's lost the ball. So Australia will get another opportunity with just on a minute to go. And the forward pack taking their time to get over there and set. Minute to go now, 14-6, that's acceptable for New Zealand. Time off called by the referee. Come on, Sonny, ball is fine. 20 to 6 would be completely different. New Zealanders must hold on here. You'll get a full set of six in one minute. Johns works the scrum and immediately the go away to Gaznier in at five eighths, and then he uses Cooper and Cooper held and put down 10 metres away from the Kiwi line. They will come back to the right to Johns, and Johns gets a decoy from Simpson, gives it to Kennedy, the second inside play, and Kennedy crawling along the ground. His tackle five metres away from the New Zealand line. Badiris now to Johns. They want to go wide on the left. They give it away to Darren Lockyer. In and away and firing the ball to Hunt. He can't handle it. And it's picked up by Heinmarsh. Yeah, he's not going. And the referee has ordered a knock on against Australia. And just a matter of 15 seconds remaining in the first half, which has provided those three tries, two to Australia, one to New Zealand. And that's about right on the balance of play, I think we've seen. An eight-point margin in favour of the Australians. They've been the better team. New Zealand have given them opportunities. They come to the break, but we still have a test match here. They are close enough and good enough, the visitors. And that siren in the background, certainly loud enough for anybody to hear. Matthew John, sideline. Yeah, big second half coming up for the Kiwis. Look, they want to win this game by playing mistake-free football. But at the moment, they've lost their sense of adventure. They've got to be more positive. They look good coming into the shed. 
Just a big specimen, these guys. I'm glad I've given away. <laughs> Coming up in Holden Half Time, the Carlton Mid Strength Player Cam features Andrew Johns and Benji Marshall, plus the Bundy Big Plays with Andrew Voss, Phil Gould, and Ben Eichen. And that's Holden Half Time coming up for you from Suncorp on National Nines coverage of this Test match tonight. A break and then we'll. Welcome you back to Suncorp Stadium with the New Zealanders going out to do battle in the second half and it's pretty much all uphill for them at the moment but certainly not a hopeless case. They can get a few things much better than they did in the first half and if they do they're going to be a much stronger opposition. 14 to 6 down at the moment, Cooper and Gasly are the tries for Australia, Kidwell the try for New Zealand. First try in the match in fact was scored by David Kidwell for those of you that have a bet on the first try scorer. Interesting to note of course that Australia still have those two replacements they haven't touched yet Thurston and Menzies and Frank Pritchard has not been used for New Zealand big crowd in as I said 46-3 is the best crowd they've attracted in a Brisbane test match <clears throat> and uh, I was talking to David Middleton at halftime he thinks they may have cracked that record which is a further indication that by New Zealand winning the Tri-Nations last November. It could do nothing but good for our game on a global scale, as small as it may well be. And I think a lot of credit has to go to Wayne Bennett. He persevered with Test Match Football. He had a passion about it. He was keen on the Tri-Nations. In fact, he had a, a lot to do with the birth of the Tri-Nations. And I think he should be remembered on a night like tonight. With Ricky Stewart in the coaching role now for the first time. Darren Lockyer takes the Australians back out. Matty Johns is on the sideline. Now, Craig Bellamy is the assistant coach of the Australians for tonight's test. Yes, that's right. I'm down here with Craig Bellamy. And uh, what did Ricky have to say? Well, he's pretty happy with the way we're going. Um, just thinking, you know, we, we need to dominate field position this half. And perhaps uh, we're probably shifting a little bit too much. And, uh, yeah, just take them on the in inside shells a little bit more. Thanks for your time, Craig. Lockyer, the captain for the 14th time in the Australian colours. And, of course, he was very much in all of those discussions that we were having leading up to this test match. Who goes to 5 eighths? Does Lockyer go to fullback? Well, at the moment, it's going OK. Going OK, leading 14 to 6. And Lockyer marks that ball appropriately as it is fed off then for Stephen Simpson to take it back. And he's looking for the ground and finding it eight metres out from his own line. The deer is a dummy half now, and O'Mealy has asked to take it, a, take it ahead and be met by the New Zealand defence, which up the middle has been very strong, and that tackle was made by Torpy. Here's Badiris taking a very early run in the second half. Just inside the 20-metre line, play towards the eastern side of the ground as Mason takes on three of them and eventually is taken down by Asatasi, his Canterbury teammate. And now Ben Kennedy goes right up the middle. Hindmarsh was looking for a short pass, but... He had far too much on his plate, Ben Kennedy, just retaining possession. But it's not a bad six by Australia. In fact, a very good set. And down it's uh, kicked by Johns for Webb to come back. Out towards the 30-metre line with Cooper chasing and making the tackle. Webb, the fullback, plays it back. And Vungenai, he gets the pass away to Webster. And Webster is taken down around the legs by O'Mealy and up the top by Darren Lockett. This is Tupu who's uh, out towards the centre of the ground. Ball comes free. Referee has blown up a penalty to New Zealand. He's ruled that it was stolen in a two-man tackle or more. Gee, it's so important to have big wingers in this game. I know Tupu's going to lose one here. I think he's lost that cold. I don't think that's been stripped at all. But the big wingers in this side, have a look at them. Matt King, Tamana Tahu, Jake Webster, Tommy Tupu. You need them. In this physical game, you need big wingers who can come in and work for you. And they're not going to get bent back by opposition forwards. Both coaches have got it right in their selections here. Now David Fee Umu, he takes the tap and it is with Webster. In a strong three or four metre run to be tackled by Ben Kennedy, 20 metres away from the Australian line. Here is Williams, who's probably just felt his way into this match. He's only played one full game of football in three matches back. As it goes away from Nathan Kalis out to Roy Asatasi, and Asatasi is tackled 
by the Newcastle players, Badiris and Simpson. It's played back to Fayumu. Off it goes now, out to Marshall. Marshall away for Webb, and Webb gets it back on the inside for Anderson, and he's a metre from the line. Anderson held by Kennedy as New Zealand press again. Lulawai back and finds Kalis coming up the middle. Nathan, and he's held about five metres out from the line. Fifth tackle gone then for the Kiwis. To the left they go with Fayubu. Shows it, gives it, and uh, it's Asatasi who's held in an upright tackle, and that would be turnover time. That's a big play on last tackle. No grab a kick into the end goal. No kick for the winger. The Perth's a little double pump out of dummy half and try and barge your way over. Too meek. Easy for the Australians. Oh, King. He took the shoulder charge of uh, Sonny Bill Williams. Lost the ball. Williams then got to the ball first. So New Zealand turned defence into attack very quickly. Vangana tackled on the 20 metre line. Kennedy working overtime in defence together with Cooper. Played by Vangana. Webb a dummy half. On to Lulaway. Out it goes to Kalis. And Kalis is tackled 12 metres out right on the centre of the ground. Third tackle gone for Nathan Kalis as it's gone back to Fayumu. And away now for Benji Marshall. Holds it up. Decoy from Torpy. And the ball finding Louis Anderson. And he's tackled over there by King. But they're only about five metres away from that corner post on the southern end of the ground. Nathan Kalis, they lost ground there as the defence converge. Badiris and Kennedy in the main, just outside the 10 metre line. So the fifth tackle again is with us. And it's Lulawai. Lulawai runs towards Sunny Bill, puts a kick in. But it bounces up nicely. And Carmichael Hunt goes to ground under the tackle of Lulawai. Yeah, the, the shot there ruled to be off the shoulder from Sunny Bill Williams as Hindmarsh takes it outside the 10 metre line, you need big wingers in this game and you need big wingers who make good decisions and that's what Matt King did moments ago as Cooper on the outside, Lulaway comes across, misses Cooper down, not held, now he is and he'll play the ball right on the western touch line on the halfway line, as Lockyer gives it away to Kennedy, Kennedy goes straight over the top of Fayumu who hangs on grimly and makes a boot lace tackle Badiris then gets it on to Mason and Mason will be held in the tackle 20 metres out towards the centre of the ground and there's a problem there for Thomas, Thomas Lulawai. Thank you, Peter. To the blind side, Johns spins the ball away and Tamana Tahu, Tamana Tahu, he has scored Australia's third. Tahu scores for Australia. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Andrew Johns at his best. We are going to go upstairs to see the grounding but from first viewing it did look as though there wasn't any problem with it. Tahu ducking under the tackle. Nothing has gone over the sideline except the defender. You can see Lulawai in the background. The decision has already been made to get him off. He ended up coming up with an, an ankle tap on a flying Matt Cooper. But the cutout pass from Andrew Johns, absolutely superb. Sonny Bill Williams was the widest defender, came in a little bit, and the pass found the right mark. So it is a try. for watching. I've known for a minute now. Here's Kim Beasley with a big smile on his face. And um, you knew, obviously, 60 seconds ago, there was no trouble with the try. Here's a replay of the tries. Cooper, Gazni, Atahu have scored. Just watch this ball here from Andrew Johns. It's a potential intercept, but he takes the risk anyway. And his former Newcastle teammate, Tamana Tahu positioned himself perfectly. Just the vision. He looks inside, he looks at the defence, he looks out, and then spirals it across two teammates to find Tamana Tahu with a good run to the line. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, that was Cooper making that break. I thought it was just a quick flashback to what he did earlier, but he was the one that made that initial break for Australia. Brilliant run by Cooper. But Tahu, I told you earlier, has been in sparkling form. And from the sideline, Johns. Johns has got it there. Andrew. And what about the roar? It makes a difference when you've got a green and gold jumper compared to a blue one for Andrew Johns on the back of this try. Wyatt has been scored down that side. It is a torn hamstring they suspect for Thomas Lulawai. His hit and run mission, he's come out of here from the Harlequins in London. His night has come to an end. And New Zealand now in a lot of trouble. Six minutes gone, second half, and they've lost Thomas Lulawai. And this is Matt King who's tackled and forced back some 18 metres away from his own line. Mason this time, running it straight at Fayumu. He's been good, Willie Mason, tonight. 
But Dearis now sweeping the pass away from ground level to Johns and then to Kennedy and the famous Newcastle trio. They've been together a couple of times tonight, let me tell you. Kennedy losing the ball this time. That's Fayumu met there, challenged by Cooper and by O'Mealy and put to ground. Yeah, Mason's been a real handful. And Matt Cooper has been superb tonight. Defensively, absolutely outstanding. He's made a couple of busts. If anything, he's probably outshone his Dragons teammate in Gazna. Now Pritchard is out there for New Zealand. Still, we have not seen Ricky Stewart use the other two replacements that I mentioned at half-time, Menzies and Thurston. A couple of nice cards to have up your, up your sleeve, aren't they? Ball played there by uh, Asatasi as it goes on to Marshall. He shows it to Kales and it goes out to Williams who holds it out as though he's going to pass but then takes the tackle as he tries to break through. 20 metres away from the line. They're five metres in from touch on the western side. Marshall getting it on for Nathan Kalis again. Jason, I notice, down on the sidelines getting ready to come back into the game. He has done that just now. As they go to the blind side for Marshall, he puts a little kick in. And the big man flies for Sterling. And it's a presentation. It's a presentation try for the Kiwi, Sonny Bill Williams. He has scored, but it was a bat down from, I believe, Tamana Tahu. Hoping for the best, but you don't speculate like that. Well, maybe a display of overconfidence there. We waxed lyrical about his effort in the first half to put it back to Carmichael Hunt. He actually had a pretty good take on that football. Tamara Tahu is a good enough athlete to have caught that two-handed, unopposed. Benji Marshall, the deliberate little chip. Tahu, he could have, he almost had caught it. Gave Carmichael Hunt no chance. Sonny Bill Williams on the spot. They hit back. Well, it's a lesson to all young wingers. You know, and I don't want to harp on the fact, but if you get two hands to it, there's no reason not to catch it. Carmichael Hunt had no idea what he was doing. That's a gift for New Zealand, an unnecessary play. Having forced to the front 20-6, to they've just invited the Kiwis back into the game. I said at half-time, as a coach, I mean, even in the front of the first half, where he tipped it back to Carmichael Hunt. I know it looks brilliant, but there's a percentage in this game that has to be honoured. Really, a show of overconfidence, as Peter Sterling pointed out. Webb then with another shot at goal, and this time he gets it. So at least there's one kick in the game that has been good for the New Zealanders. 20 points to 12 in the 49th minute, Australia leading at the Test match from Suncourt. Friday night football in the shape of Test football, the Bundaberg Rum Test match between Australia and New Zealand. Australia leading by 20 points to 12 after they basically gave New Zealand a try just on the other side of the break. Jason Kalis talking of breaks is trying to do that down on his own 10 metre line. They've got to build on that the Kiwis, they need field position. They get Benji Marshall up the other end of the field, this test match is far from over. It's all about possession and position. Jason Kalis then running at Ben Kennedy and Willie Mason and Steve Menzies in the headgear is about to come on, the, the famous headgear. Williams, Marshall got a pass away, it went down off the attempted tackle, and now it's back to Fayumu. No, no sign of restarting the tackle count. No, no six again, so this will be the last tackle now, kicking from inside their 20. Webb plays the ball to Vanganar, Vanganar getting it away to Marshall as quickly as he could. It's not a bad kick under the circumstances, and Hunt it is who replies. Hunt comes back. checking the welfare of the man on the ground. It did look like he slipped a little bit here, Carmichael Hunt, but let's have a look where the contact is from. Well, he's hit him with a tackle that probably was legal last season with the shoulder. It will be attacking the head of the opponent carrying the football. They've called for the stretcher, but last year that tackle would have been OK, Gus. Now, Peter's making the point, and it's a valid point, that they have introduced that you can't attack the head or the neck of a player with the shoulder. 
needlessly or recklessly. I don't think he's done it needlessly or recklessly at all. It's definitely a penalty, OK? Yeah. He was falling because he was off balance, but you hit him in the head, so that's why it's a penalty, OK? Right. But we are going to put it on report so they can have a look at it. Yeah, look, some things in rugby league are just accidents. And some things in rugby league can't be helped. That couldn't be helped. I do not think that's an illegal tackle. I know what the rules are going to say this year. But the rule makers sometimes haven't been out there in the middle and been faced with this sort of... He was falling into that. It was a good, solid shot. It's unfortunate. It looks ugly. Pritchard is down. Hunt is down. And unfortunately, he's caught him on the chin and knocked him out. Now, I don't know that there's too much either player could have done about that. What it will mean, I guess, is that Jonathan Thurston will come into the action, move to 5'8", Darren Lockyer back to fullback. It's a nice movement there, nice coverage for Australia. And let's see how this fires up the test match from here. It's now Michael Hunt taken from the field. Steve Menzies is already coming out there now. Andrew Voss sideline. And the reception for Carmichael Hunt as he's on the medicap coming from the ground. He might remember it, but he'll watch it on the tape later. Really moving stuff from the fans here. And what about the reception now for Jonathan Thurston as well? Real big moment in this test match. Thurston in the green and gold headgear. A memorable moment for Jonathan. But the New Zealanders were lifted by that gift try that they received moments ago. The Australians will be lifted by the Carmichael Hunt entry. And merely then to the 20 metre line. A lot of talk about Carmichael Hunt will be spotted in the game. Well, he was certainly spotted. He was spotted by Frank Pritchard with a shoulder that has taken Hunt out of the game at the 50th minute. He may well be back as it goes now from Badiris out to Johns. And Johns turns it on the inside for Simpson. Simpson is seven metres out from the New Zealand line. Badiris a dummy half. Lockyer up on the left. Johns on the right. It's gone to Thurston. Thurston to Menzies. So the two most recent replacements combining out there on the right side. The stretch will be on back to Johns, who's in the middle of the ground. we will need a big pass from the dummy half. Finding Johns now, 10 metres away. Two men run a detour. Lockyer gets another detour. Cooper is tapped. He's handed and touched the ground. He's gone back to Lockyer. Now it's going away to Tamana Tahu, who would love to score another try to make up for the presentation he gave them just a few moments ago. Five tackles gone, Australia. Padera Nobody reads it better from the dummy half area. He knew that Jake Webster was out of play. There he is receiving attention. He was actually behind the Australian attack, Jake Webster. And Danny Badira says he did at the other end for Mark Gasnier. Enables Nathan Hindmarsh to crash across in the corner. This is the play where he gets hurt, Jake Webster, making that tackle. Nobody covers on the right-hand side now. As we freeze it there, there you can see Jake Webster trying to make his way back, and there you can see the try scorer on the outside of all the New Zealand defenders as play continues. Everybody is moving the other way because that's the way that Danny Badiris is shaping the pass. Benji Marshall was moving that way, but he came back at the last moment in Hindmarsh. When he wraps for his defensive game tonight, he's got a try and a test. John's then from the sideline. 20 metres out on the western side as the players rejoice the try scored by one of their hardest workers but engineered brilliantly engineered brilliantly Johns and Lockyer played important roles but no bigger role was played than that of Danny Badiris and Johns from the sideline gets it over again just with a little push but he gets it there Brilliant. a couple of great things about this try though Danny Badiris's vision Nathan Hindmarsh's vision, but I want you to watch the tackling technique of Benji Marshall, who was isolated on the wing. Benji Marshall is involved in the tackle. He will go back to the short side. Hindmarsh will spot him. Badiris will spot him. Now watch Marshall will refuse to tackle with his right shoulder. He actually goes in with his left shoulder over the top. The right shoulder, which is the one he injured, he wouldn't get it involved in the tackle. That's a bad sign. So Australia now back in command at 26 to 12. And uh, 
O'Mealy with a strong surge and then met and here's a penalty here's a penalty against the New Zealander Jason Kalis going in after the tackle had been made they won't want to get silly here New Zealand as I said right at the start of the game it's one thing to be aggressive it's another thing to be smart you don't want to invite Australia down with plenty of possession they will hurt you wait wait O'Mealy again basically inviting them to come and get me as Menzies now runs and moves with his hips from left to right and then takes the tackle and is put down by Fayumu. But Dearest knows the markers weren't direct. He tries to invite them. Thurston's with the ball, tries to slide Kennedy through an opening. And Kennedy is tackled 15 metres away from the Kiwi line. But Dearest now counts his numbers on the blind before going open for Johns to come back to the try scorer Heinmarsh. And Heinmarsh is held upright from the dearest to go to dummy half and they come back on the blind side lock out a second man play and he goes Tahu Tahu has scored Tamana has got his second Tamana has scored as great as Pip Fry even though they've gone for examination it looks okay everything is going down this left corridor wind in the sails now for the Australian team they created an overlap there. It was beautiful catch and pass from Matt Cooper. He's had a blinder tonight, the number four, on this side of the field. And on the Bundy Rum Telestrator, as we freeze it there, you can say it's a great decoy run also from Ben Kennedy. That attracted the outside defenders in. Matt Cooper came in late from behind. And Tamana Tahu is again the recipient on the outside. Beautiful shape and pass it for all intents and purposes. It looks as though Lockyer was going to find Kennedy. He found Cooper. Catch pass. Tahu in the corner. There's Benji Marshall again. I don't want to harp on it for the young lad because I feel so sorry for him. That's a try. The decoy runner hasn't really made contact with Marshall. But when you watch the replay again, watch Marshall's reluctance to use his right shoulder. This kid's still got a major problem, be it physically or mentally, with that injury. No worries with the try. We'll get a green light. The big concern is Benji Marshall's defence and that right shoulder. Tamana Tahu makes up for the one at the other end. He'll be happy about that. Andrew Johns has already had two kicks of goal from this blade of grass, both successful. He might have a major problem with that uh, right shoulder, Gus, but he certainly hasn't got a problem with courage, has he? Oh, no, whatsoever. I mean, the fact that the kid is playing yep. and he's out there in the line doing it, he is unbelievably tough. Too tough for his own good, probably. That's how he's got these injuries. I think that's more to the point. He just was aching to get a, a black and white jumper over those shoulders of his that aren't working for him. John's again. Oh, he's just coming in on the same tarmac. Just loves landing here. Fossey, sideline. It's a goal-kicking clinic tonight. I think that's four by my count from the sideline. Ben Eichen on the sideline watching it unfold. Where is it going wrong for the Kiwis? Well, the one thing that worked for the Kiwis last year was their ability not to give away penalties and to hold the ball. They're not doing it well here tonight. It's telling on the score, Ben, and it's exactly what they need to do if they're going to get back into this match. Marshall with the restart. And Lockyer fielding it in goal before sending seven to Siva back out some 15 metres from his line. Of course, Seven Siva will be involved in that match, well, we would think, on Sunday against Newcastle. A match that has got the punters scratching their heads. Will he play? Won't he play? Will he play? Played by O'Mealy. He's been strong. Mark, he really has taken them on. 32 to 12, a 20-point break now. Sunday football for us, by the way, is the Roosters versus the Dogs. And that has seen some fireworks in more ways than one down through the years. Kennedy. Kennedy asking the referee for a penalty. And Klein basically says, get up and play the ball. As Johns rakes a kick away. And Webb goes after it, brings it back. He's been very good, this referee tonight. He's an Australian. They should get him back. I like the way he's controlled this game. He might like it over there. Now, here is Tupu. How could you possibly like it over there? Don't say that. We're going live into Britain tonight. Please don't say that. Now Tupu plays the ball 22 metres away and the 15 is back with us again. Fayalongo says Warren as he hesitates to remember what they told me to call him. Fayalongo. Here is Jason Kalis now. 35 metres out from his own line. As uh, the Kiwis get it out beyond the 40 with uh, Clinton Torpy. 
And in Hunt's absence, obviously, Darren Lockyer has slotted back into the fullback position. Chip and chase here for Benji Marshall, but John's leads it well. Finds Lockyer. And the wave of attack continues to come first and playing a 5 8 outside John's. Marshall just uh, trying to harass uh, Lockyer by just pushing him around a little bit in the play of the ball. Now it's Menzies who will play it. Tackler was Nathan Taylor's. Badiris uses Kennedy down the short side as Vandenar is met in a head on confrontation together with David Kidwell, who got the first of the New Zealand tries. Williams got the second, which really was scored by Tamana Tahu. So Tamana has really scored three tries tonight two for us and, and one for them. Now here's Thurston, really shortened up on a strong tackle over there by Clinton Torpy. Off they go to the right side for Johns, and Johns puts a grubbing kick in. He's looking for his winger, King, but no. It was an each-way bet that's found the touchline. It was one of those kicks he wants to punch into the ground. It, gets, it sits up on about the third bounce sometimes. This time it got a, a little bit of a runner going. He kicks it hard into the ground and just wants it to sit up on this bounce here, but it gets a run on. Goes out over the sideline. It was an each-way bet. He ran a place. He got his money back. Very important 20 minutes coming up for New Zealand. Still a quarter of this game to go. They trailed by 20. Australia win tonight. It's still only the first step back as Luke O'Donnell prepares to come back into this game. What this game does is set up the Tri-Nations at the end of the year. Australians will only be deemed number one again if they can win that. And that will come after our grand final through October, November. It's uh, easily the biggest representative season that the Australian Rugby League has undertaken with uh, that Tri-Nations being played in both islands of New Zealand and three states of Australia. As they lose the ball, they lose it backwards and Anderson has got the ball for the Kiwis. He got away from the tackle from Sibon to Siva who goes in and makes the tackle after Hamas has already made the tackle. And to be quite frank with you, I thought it should have been a penalty for the Kiwis because there was no need for Sibon to Siva to be involved once the tackle had been made. It's called a flop. Now it's first and on to Lockyer. Lockyer cuts out Cooper. out from the line. He's unbelievable, isn't he? Tamana. Oh, yeah. Badiris away from big Mark O'Mealy and Shrek goes barging ahead. He will play it. Badiris is dummy half. He's really undone them tonight. There's a little pop of the pass up there for Sibina Siva. Still short on the far side, the New Zealanders in defence. So Badiris realises that. He goes out to Johns and Johns goes long into Thurston who puts in a little kick and goes his over it. So do is a Tupu and it's a line drop. That's brilliant by Jonathan Thurston. Really brilliant. The pass was good enough to give him an overlap, but he read that the defence raced up very, very quickly, and he just touches it on the toe and controls it into the in goal. That is so hard to do. What a talent this kid is. And at the top of his game at the moment in 2006. Drop out to be taken by Webb. Gets his best drop kick of the night away from under the uprights to Thurston and then for Sivan Asiva to go back at them and they meet him and put him down on the 30 metre line. Louis Anderson and Nathan Kalis, Badira's off and then they decide to try and punch up behind to play the ball hoping the markers might be trying to hide from the action but nobody's hiding at the moment. New Zealand are trying to get back into this match if they can. They were for a moment but then snuffed out. Amelie throws it down, O'Donnell picks it up, gives it away to Thurston. Thurston is taken down 22 metres up from the New Zealand line. Played to Badiris and then for Johns, and Johns puts a kick in. Lockie is out for will he get the bounce? No, he doesn't get the bounce. Webster gets the bounce for the Kiwis, and Webster comes running out to the 10 metre line. Well, he was the 4-1 outsider to get that football, Jake Webster. There were three favourites in front of him. Somehow the bounce went his way. He's done a David Bradbury. He's come from the clouds. They've all fallen over. Steve, Steve, Steve Stephen Ladbury. No, it's Bradbury. Steve's brother. Steve, right. Steve Bradbury. He was at the back of the pack. They all fell over in front of him. Come through and got the gold medal. <laughs> 30 metres out from the Kiwis line. Well, that'll do me. David Bradbury, magnificent. Oh, you knew what I was talking about. No, of course we do. Hey, gold medal's a gold medal too, baby. 32 to 12 in favour of Australia. They've scored... Five tries with two by Tahu. And Matty Johns on the sideline. Yes, Matt. I'll tell you what, guys, I've been impressed by Lockyer tonight. He's, he's brilliant at 5'8, but at fullback, he's dynamic. He's freed of defensive responsibility. He can pick and choose when he injects himself. 
I wonder what the, wonder what the Queensland selectors are thinking. Well, here's a break being made by Roy Asatasi. And he's pulled five metres away from the line. Held by Sibana Siva. Now Nigel Vanganar dancing around behind the man who played the ball. Then he gets it away. It's gone to Lewis Anderson. Then it's gone on. And away to Benji Marshall. King going up looking for an intercept. And it goes over the sideline. We will take a break. A 32 to 12. A 20 point ball game Australia. Test football coming to you on this Friday night. And I'm reminded that this being the start of the representative season, City versus Country coming up next week. 32 to 12, Australia, the Bundaberg Rum Test match between Australia and the world title holders of the moment, New Zealand. Lockyer frees himself from a tackle and then is put down 31 metres away from his own line. Gasly is a dummy half, he may decide to go. No passes and uh, gets the ball away for a strong run by Willie Mason. Gasnia finds himself a dummy half again as the penalty goes to Australia. It's against David Kidwell holding down. That could be a sign of tiredness. That could be a sign that they're starting to try and slow it down. Australians will be looking to make them pay. It was a time and a, quite a space of time when you expected New Zealand sides to get tired in the last 10 minutes of the first and second halves more so than most teams and that's when they normally opened up here's Thurston trying to open them up the ball to ground picked up by Kennedy he's so alert and so athletic for a big man he's pulled down by Asatasi Gutierrez looks around looking for Johns and goes to him out there 10 meters away on the right turns it back on the inside for Menzies and Menzies is well well marked out there and in fact dragged back down the ground by Sonny Bill Williams in the main Ball, and it's a penalty. No, he's lost the ball. Lost the ball. Means he's losing the ball. He might have paced himself tonight, but gee, I've liked the performance of Sonny Bill Williams too. You can see that he's just warming to the task nicely. Some good touches. Defensively strong again. Played quite a few minutes. And that's the biggest crowd in Brisbane since 1966. I'm hearing it's not a record crowd for a test match in Brisbane, which we were hoping would be the case, but upwards of 44,000 here tonight. And that is a very, very healthy sign for international football, as we know it in rugby league. Oh, gee, that was a heavy tackle. And it was David Kidwell on the end of it. I thought it might have been asked a question of by the referee, but such was not the case, as it goes over to Pritchard now. And he's tackled 40 metres away from his own line. The man who took Carmichael Hunt out in a tackle that some doesn't, don't think was necessarily dangerous. Asatasi to Williams, and Williams 35 metres away from the Australian line. Now it's with Anderson. Now it's with Marshall. Long ball, out bouncing twice to Webster. Webster puts a kick in. He's after it. So is Lockyer. Lockyer beats him to the punch, and Lockyer will play the ball. That would be awkward for Darren Lockyer. I know he's a great player and he's played plenty of fullback, but when you haven't played it for a while, to suddenly have a, a winger chip over the top near the goal line to come across and get a rolling ball, that just shows how talented this bloke is. That wouldn't be easy to do at all. Thurston having a, a small part to play there before his Cowboys teammate, Luke O'Donnell, gets up clutching at the ribcage. Quick hand. Super tackles there, the first from Paul Fadarira, the second of tries over from Brent Webb. The attack continues. Andrew John slips it inside the Danny Badiris cut. Fend off the defending player. Now the last. And you will notice that the, the trend is there. It's becoming very predictable. They, they might go one play back into the middle before they come back to try and hit New Zealand down the right side defence. That has supplied a harvest of tries for them tonight down the right side of New Zealand's defence. It's always a good play, Rabbits, when you make a break to actually look as though you're going away from the play, the ball then come back through it. The fellas that have scrambled back to make the tackle can sometimes drop off with a little bit tired. Going back through the play, the ball after you've made a long break can get you a lot of success. Tyler Carmichael Hunt is um, OK. He won't be back tonight, but he is OK. And that's, uh, that's wonderful news, particularly 
as I recall sending a jury a call to his mum watching the match over in Rarotonga tonight while looking after her mum who's not at all well so there's a message particularly for you Mrs Hunt ball played by the 15 that has failed longer that's gone over to Marshall who has a long time to think about the kick and it goes very high down towards winger Tamana Tahu and he's tackled just into the field of play he got a late call there Tamana Tahu Darren Lockie appointed to him to take the football and he never really got in a position to do so got cleaned up once he'd retrieved it Jonathan Thurston now out of dummy half tries the step Bungana envelops him 11 out they've just popped off early here the Australians they're straggling back they've got a good lead on the scoreboard they'll need someone to fire them up to finish this off it's Mason Mason with a good charge and stepping high and stepping himself out of a couple of tackles before Baderas gets it away and here's Simpson taking it down the ground the ball goes forward off Australia to Australia okay, and a scrum will pack 40 metres away from the Australian line. They've just knocked off. 11 minutes left on the scoreboard. They've got a healthy lead. Maybe thoughts of protecting themselves for the weekend's game. Just strolling towards the finish line. I don't think New Zealand have knocked off. A little one-arm ball carries there. Trying to get the, the half-chance pass away. Indicates that well, we've probably got this one won. I don't think New Zealand will give up here. I'd say they're suggesting they can come back and win the game, but... They'll keep trying right to the 80th minute. Wait, 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 Virgil! They'll need to solve the problem around the halves. Come the Tri Nations. I don't think Thomas Dulawai is the answer. And I don't think Benji Marshall is best served to playing halfback in this team either. Play like a halfback, but not, not always the first receiver. Peter, their record without Stacey Jones has been terrible over the years. And it wasn't just necessarily Stacey Jones' ability, as we have a mistake there from Roy Asatasi, who has tried very hard, as always, tonight. It was just the, the, the presence of Stacey Jones. He gave the players around him confidence. He had a certain aura for what he's achieved for New Zealand Rugby League over the last decade. He's very, very difficult to replace, and you know, they are struggling to do so. 30 metres away, then, from the Australian line. Ball in the, the hands of Mark Gaznier and he gets it on to Lockyer. And it's a never say die attitude by the Australians at the moment with O'Donnell ducking away and they're really not taking them to ground, they're not locking up the football as we saw exhibited there on three occasions as Gaznier plays the ball, but here passes to Sid and receiver stretching out now and taking play 10 metres into New Zealand's territory. He's been very good tonight, Sid and receiver. He and Mason have been terrific up front. Now Johns, and Johns turns it inside for Mason, and Mason gets away from Anderson, gets the ball away to Gassier, Gassier on the lockout, Brilliant. shut the gate, Brendan is the word, Brendan is the performance, Brendan is the man, Lockyer scores for Australia. They are set up by the leader, quality performance tonight from Willie Mason, pushed up from his normal back row position to the head of the engine room, and the minutes he's played, He's been in blockbusting form. This was the previous play from Petro Sivanasiva. The way he worked in tandem with Shane Webke so often at this level. John's the inside pass to Willie Mason. Gets rid of Louis Anderson. Kidwell can't get him. Asatasi comes over the top. The catch and again the quick pass there from Mark Gaznia, who's had to travel to get to the centre of the ruck to throw the final pass to the eventual try scorer. Good work by the front rowers. Big Willie Mason has been strong in the middle of the field. Gets the unload away. Lockyer backing up. Lockyer from fullback backing up. Gaznia from centre in looking for the ball. Nice play. So conversion is there for Australia to lengthen the scoreboard out to 38-12 their favour. Eight minutes to go in the Bundaberg Rum Test match from Suncorp Stadium. Welcome back to the Test match. Australia 38-12. And on the downhill run, they've turned in a scintillating second half. They really have played magnificently. They may have clocked off in some shape or form in the last five minutes, but they still didn't stop them scoring a brilliant try with Lockyer on the end of some wonderful work in front of him. Keep in mind tonight, at the end of the game, we'll have our normal post-match, but what the boys will be trying to do is to tell you, as the, the Kiwis have a final dig, 
the boys will be trying to find out for you who is going to play and who is not going to play for their club sides at the weekend starting tomorrow here's Fayumu out from dummy half and he's brought down seven meters away from the Australian line and uh, he will play it for Vangana to give to Marshall Marshall dummies and then gets it away and here's a chance for Fadawira but Fadawira has tackled a couple of meters out from the line Australia's still keen, they're still enthusiastic in defence, finding somebody to mark up on as Fayolongo goes to ground. Eight metres away from the Australian line, with a scoreboard of 38 to 12 against them, the Kiwis. Marshall leaning out and forward, and then Asatasi, and he loses the ball, Asatasi. It was almost like he gave it to the Australians. And O'Donnell plays it 10 metres out from his own line. Thurston, a little run away, out to the right side, or out to his left side, I should say. He's put down just inside the 20. As Ben Kennedy gets ready to come back in for, I would imagine, his final uh, minutes in Test football. Um, both he and Andrew Johns really have been invited back to play in this match. Here is a dummy half. Out he goes, inviting people to come towards him. Then Lockyer to the line, over the shoulder of Kennedy, but it's gone forward. Referee Klein ordering play to a halt. Oh, that was a chance for Ben Kennedy to score with his swan song. Good ball there from Menzies. Nice work here from the Dragon pair to link up down the left-hand side of the field. And from the next play, the ball, Lockyer and Kennedy under the post. Looked like they were going to prize them open. Kennedy just couldn't get a handle on the ball. Come up with a knock on. It's great to see the best players in the game. The best players from all the good clubs play together. I think people really love to see this Australian team go around in these colours. It's great to see Johns and Lockyer play together. Seven a Seaver and Mason up front. O'Mealy coming off the bench. I suppose being totally selfish, it's a shame we've only seen this half-back, five-eighth combination together on two occasions. That's the one thing that we'll need to remember when Andrew Johns does eventually retire after what has been a quite a remarkable career as to how much adversity he had to face and how many times he came back from injuries that you know, could have really put a full stop there and then. Crowd thought that that was a knock-on. It didn't look that way. So injury has played a major part in Andrew Johns' career and it is a shame that we didn't see him alongside Darren Lockyer more often. By Anderson now, scooped up in the one hand by Fayumu, and Kennedy's tackle has crept up a little bit high. Vangana doesn't like it. Vangana, Kennedy, I one another up and down. Big Mason goes in, separates them, sends them back to a neutral corner. So Kennedy penalised for an arm that crept up around the neck. Tackle on Fayumu. As Sonny Bill Williams throws a pass that goes sadly behind Tupu. He's held down by Gaznia with the defence totally dominating attack and they can stay there longer in the tackle, that being the case with Asatasa. So that was another tackle that Peter was talking about earlier with the tackle of Pritchard on um, Carmichael Hunt. Under the rules of this year, the referees are giving penalties for infringements up around the neck area and now particularly the shoulder can't be used in a high manner either. Well it's zero tolerance above the shoulder now and you know, the players will need to adapt to that as far long go. He's done well in his debut tonight. Last tackle, 15 out. They look for Marshall. Something on the last. He goes for the kick. And the kick is fielded by Darren Lockyer. He splices through. Opens them up. They're after Lockyer. He hasn't got the pace to foot it with Rip. In fact, it was Marshall who rounded him up. Now it's King. King running at Asatasi, and it's a bootlace tackle that brings the Storm winger or centre down, and he's, he's still down on his haunches as O'Mealy bumps away. Like one of those go-karts at the show. Now it's away for Kennedy. Kennedy to the halfway. He has toiled hard and endlessly tonight. Ben Kennedy, one of the, the great back rowers of the modern era. Might just be one more try left in the Australians before the 80 minutes is up as Steve Simpson inside the 40, fourth tackle. Badiris now, a run, he's got Johns with him, he's still going, Badiris, he's still going, Danny, go on Danny, put it down, enjoy the moment. Danny Badiris scores, another test match try. How good is he? How good is Danny Badiris? You sounded like you were 
calling Liesl Jones in with the gold medal. Go, Liesl, go the legend. That's a fitting end. Danny Badiris, so instrumental in what this team does when they've got the football. The little in and away. Defend on Fayumu, another one on Webb. Pointed out before, he came down from Tauri as an inside back. He's made the number nine all his own. And the fact that we are saying he's a better hooker forward than someone like Steve Walters is just about the ultimate rap. And Ben Kennedy has been invited up to have a kick at goal in his last match in Test football. It'll be a nice way to finish his career, a bit of a smile. He's got a bit of style about him back to the left. Two further than the ball. So ben Kennedy is saluted by Andrew Johns, and there they are, the two famous Novacastrians. Ben now, of course, with Manly and leading the resurgence of the Eagles. He gets two points in this test match. And we're assuming that they will now be putting in the letters so that they won't be required. We know that Johns has pretty much been excused, but Kennedy, there was still some conjecture as to whether he would have to play for New South Wales. You can tell from the way he talks that he doesn't think his body is up to another Origin campaign and I think that this will be his representative finale along with the number seven. So Nathan Heinmark carries it back. Got himself a try in the 52nd minute tonight. Tahu has got a couple as O'Mealy continues to run it up and seemingly with no thought of self-preservation O'Mealy Play back for Gasney to go to this short side and Johns sends Stephen Simpson up towards halfway. I'll tell you what, he's really rolled his sleeves up tonight, Simpson, as he always does. He's not one of those players who gets a lot of raps, but my goodness, he's been industrious. Made a lot of pride in this performance tonight. I know Ricky Stewart, all through his preparation, the months of preparation for this Australian Test match, was stressing the fact that they had to have pride in playing for the green and gold jersey. They should never let themselves down. This scoreboard, this performance tonight, is what you should expect of Australia. They're 44. great players. 44 to 12 as Johns puts a kick in. It's coming back towards the middle. There's a try coming. Oh, can they get it? Yes, lock out. Lock out scores. Menzies overruns the ball. There were three of them there. Gastia, Menzies, lock out. They almost fought each other for the right to put the ball down. But Darren Lockyer gets his second try. Well, we're going upstairs just to make sure that everything is OK. We'll be looking at the onside. That's fine. Andrew Johns is about two metres inside the 30-metre line. Darren Lockyer was only one. Does anybody get a touch here? Stephen Menzies doesn't. It just pops up. Eluded Jake Webster on that occasion. And Darren Lockyer takes it out of the arms of Mark Gatsnett. Has to reach around and get out of the way. Got to get this down. It's Andrew Johns' favourite attacking kick. Get the ball on the right-hand side of the play of the ball, on the right-hand side of the field, and hook it back to the post. He's looking to see if Menzies gets a touch here. I don't think he does. He's dragged away. No, they've all done well there. Yeah, he's been dragged away by the Kiwi player. I think it's Webster there. Well, if he gets a touch, it might have been off the top of the headgear, but that doesn't constitute a knock-on. No, he wanted to get a touch. <laughs> they were all keen for a touch, Peter. It was a game of touchy-touchies there, and Darren Lockyer, the captain, has got his second try for tonight. So the good news is that Carmichael Hunt is OK. It's a try for Darren Lockyer, his second of the night. And there's still, of course, a couple of, uh, not even a couple of them, it's 30 seconds, in fact, remaining in the Test match. The Bundy Rum man of the match in the post-match wrap. Breaking news from both dressing rooms, which will cover who's in and who's out. Lots more to come on Channel 9's post-match report tonight. Trying to watch three things at once. Australia 50, New Zealand 12 is the full-time score. 50 to 12. The world champions, the Tri-Nations champions, New Zealand, really reduced tonight by a much more passionate and committed Australian side. BJ Kennedy enjoying the moment. And what a great moment it's been for both him and Andrew Johns. And I'm talking as though they're winding down their careers right here and now. And there will be no, no reappearance at rep, rep football level for either of them. Matty Johns down on the ground. Yes, Matty. Now Danny with Ben Kennedy and son Bryce Bouquet. Mate, the goal kicking. Just talk us through it. How good was it? It was pretty ordinary, mate. I tried to talk Joey out of it, but... Uh... 
is pretty persistent and got me to do it. Mate, uh, what about that performance? Fantastic from the boys. Yeah, great, mate. It really felt like an origin build-up. It's a lot of uh, intensity in the sheds, mate. But I don't think I've ever been that nervous before I played, mate, so it was really good. Mate, look, BK, I I'm going to put you on the spot here. I mean, I think that you are playing your be the best football of your career. Can we expect to see an origin? Or is it too early to make a decision? You want to feel how you pull up in the morning? <laughs> nah, the body's getting old, mate. It's getting harder and harder and harder. I feel great now, but I'll feel ordinary tomorrow. We'll have a talk about it later, OK? Over to you, Benny. I'm with Benji Marshall, mate. Not a great result, but how did you feel out there tonight? Yeah, I felt good, eh, mate? You know, getting my timing back. And, uh, you know, it's awesome to see Joey go out on good night. He deserves it, and uh, just a pleasure to play against the best player in the world. Yeah, how did the shoulder pull up? Yeah, good, mate. Um, pretty happy with it, you know. I had to make a couple of tackles out there, and uh, it pulled up good, so I'm feeling good. Another game this weekend. You think you'll be taking the field? Yeah, I hope so, mate. Um, you know, I feel pretty fit, so, yeah, I feel good. All right, back to you, Matty. Thanks, Benny. Appreciate that. Down here with Joey Johns. Now, Joey, a bit of deja vu. Now, some of those kicks from the sideline. I remember one of your first tests. It was a Wembley. You kicked a couple from the sideline, and that almost launched your career. Yeah, it, um, it's probably one of the favourite kicks I've kicked at Wembley. It's right from the sideline. It's at the same spot. So, once you hit one from there, you, you feel like you can get them, get them all. But uh, hit them nice tonight, so hope you take them. You take them all, right? Now, look, just have a look around. How do you rank this Australian side? Alongside some of the other ones you've played it amongst the 11 years? Um, right up there, mate. You know, there's talent right through. There's no weaknesses, really. And, you know, these sort of teams, all you have to do is do your job the best you can. You don't have to do anyone else's. And it showed tonight, you know, we, we weren't that creative, but we still scored 50 points. Pleasure to play in. Just quickly, your best memory in a green and gold jersey, Joey? Oh, mate, I think you mentioned it, playing at Wembley for the first time. One of the greatest stadiums in the world and um, winning the World Cup final there. Good on you, Joey. Congratulations. Great career. Thanks, mate. Yeah, certainly. Let me endorse those remarks because I've been there and basically seen them all. There's the Kiwis uh, just uh, linking arms and uh, probably making the point that, OK, they were hot tonight, but we were hot in November and we will get it right come October and November of this year. And we are going to have to do it without Andrew Johns and Ben Kennedy when that happens. That's the Tri-Nations I'm talking about here and in New Zealand at the end of this year. Well, if you have a look at the history of this particular this this game, this one-off game, international sides haven't really come up that well against the Australians. They've been much more formidable after our grand final, and I think that will be the case again this year. Great Britain disappointing last year. They'll be better. And New Zealand will reassess themselves after this one. They'll be better. New Ze and the Australian team will have to maintain that kind of form if they're to hit back in November. So plenty still to come on Nines. Friday night football, the Bundy Rum man of the match, the breaking news from both dressing rooms, who's going to play, who's not going to play, and a lot, lot more. We'll take a break and be back to Suncorp Stadium with the panel in just a moment. Friday night football back in Brisbane and a great night for the Kangaroos. What a win over New Zealand. The players out on the ground, they have the trophy in this one-off test and they'll do it all again come the end of the year on the Tri-Nations, see if the Aussies can win back that Tri-Nations trophy. Tonight though, 50 points to 12 after the Australians had led 14-6 at half-time.